Okay, we'll return uh, to our meeting after executive session, move on to the agenda. Uh, old business being none on our agenda, we'll move to new business. Uh, department presentation for community marketing. Um, so, I don't know if I told you all, but as part, of our, as part of our reorganization, one of the things that I did was I moved community marketing from under Parks and Rec. Well, I had originally pushed it under Parks and Rec, then I pulled it out of Parks and Rec. Um, so, it's kind of under the city manager's office, and Tabitha will be kind of supervising community marketing and human resources. And so, that's why she's presenting the community marketing platform. So. So you're the HR person now? I am the HR person supervisor now. Uh, and who is the HR person? Haley Rimsberg. Is to, she's been our HR person for about a year and a half now. Okay. So. And then Kyla Wilson is our payroll coordinator. Coordinator. Is what we call that? <clears throat> so as David said, my name is Tabitha Sharp. I'm the city clerk. Um, and I am going to present the community marketing's year in review for 2018. Um, Molly has several objectives as the community marketing person for El Dorado. Um, her first objective is to market El Dorado as a destination to visitors, to support events and conventions that produce hotel stays, to help promote all local community events, uh, facility management for the Civic Center and Train Depot, website maintenance, and to provide updates to our residents about city projects. She does that via social media, um, the media screens that you see around, t around town that the city's done, the posters that she places downtown. So she does a little bit of everything. Um, here's a few pictures of our last year's events. Um, in 2018, uh, Molly put on three summer concerts at the depot with the help of several other departments in the city of El Dorado. Um, she helped the AAU tr regional track, ballet in the park, and drums across Kansas. She's also listed several other events that we had this year, this past year. Um, the Governor's One Shot Turkey Hunt, NJCAA Outdoor Track Championships, Dam Music Fest, Holly Frontier Western, uh, Celebration of Freedom and Trick or Treat down Main Street, as well as Old Fashioned Christmas. Molly's list of accomplishments for 2018. Uh, the El Dorado flag was created and distributed. Uh, happy to say that that's, it's been taken on quite well in our community. It's very popular. Um, sh we had a uh, reorganization and um, major edit of our website. And so if you haven't been, uh, David showed that to you a couple weeks ago. But it's um, a lot easier to move around now and a lot more user friendly. The media screens. Uh, you'll see one out in the hall when you come into commission room. They're at the library um, and at various other public buildings in town. It's kind of like Channel 7 for people who don't have Channel 7. Um, the banner program was implemented. Molly helps Main Street with that program. Um, she's on that group that uh, decides who can and can't put up banners downtown and helps them get the right size And now that they've got all that figured out. Um, she had uh, she put on multiple events in 2018. Uh, she managed the Civic Center and Train Depot, as we already stated. Um, she got a tourism and marketing grant from KDWPT, and that helped her pay for the Experience El Dorado campaign. It's a series of four videos that um, she'll be releasing over the next couple months. She's released two already, and then um, also helped pay for a billboard. She wanted me to show you one of those videos. So this video is the sports facilities and conventions promo. And hopefully it plays. David, did you break the computer? Welcome to El Dorado. This city has so much to offer, including a state park for camping, boating, and special events, an 18-hole golf course, three baseball and softball complexes, 20... 
hiking and walking paths, and a new 18-hole disc golf course, eager to host your next tournament. And the BG Products Veterans Sports Complex is no stranger to hosting large-scale events either. This amazing facility has experience hosting high school and NJCAA football, track, soccer, and the annual Drums Across Kansas Tour. If large meeting space is what you need, we've got you covered. Located at Butler Community College, the Hubbard Welcome Center has a sizable banquet room, catering on site, and smaller meeting rooms that can accommodate up to 800 people. Another meeting option located near the heart of downtown is the El Dorado Civic Center. We'll be happy to host your next conference, business training, or reception. The activity center can accommodate your indoor recreation needs for basketball and volleyball. And a tournament or meeting would not be complete without great food. And shopping, too. And if you need a place to catch some Z's, there are over 350 rooms within three miles of shopping and dining. We know there's other places you can host that big tournament, event, or meeting, but why bother? We also had some help with uh, local photographer, Chad Wittenberg, um, gave us some pictures and then we used some other pictures that had been donated in the contest last year. So um, those can be seen in some of those videos. Uh, as we said, Mo Molly's responsible for facility management. She books rentals, manages room setups, and marketing <coughs> for each facility that we own. Um, the Civic Center and the Train Depot are the two that we have, and you can see um, the history of rentals since 2015 there. Um, the rentals for the Civic Center stayed about the same. We had a pretty good year in 16, but other than that, we've kind of maintained uh, the train depot. number of train depot rentals has gone up. Um, Molly's involved in several things across the state um, as, as El Dorado CVB, so she's in the um, TIAC, which is Tourism Industry Association of Kansas, Sports Kansas, uh, South Central Kansas Tourism Region, and the Kansas Explorers Club. She also goes to the State Fair um, and TIAC Conference as CVB Director. Um, upcoming projects and events in 19, and she's going to assist the Times Gazette in completing a new El Dorado Visitor's Guide and Map. Um, she'll be advertising in lots of publications across the state, <coughs> uh, publicizing the four new promo videos. She's started with social media, but her hope is to get beyond that, and um, that way we see them in other places as well. Um, we will be doing a photo contest and another wall calendar this year. Um, it, it will be limited to one uh, time of the year though. So um, you'll be able to make sure you take your pictures because she'll collect them for that one one month out of this year. Um, and, and then she would like to increase rentals at Civic Center and Depot. We have several events coming up. Um, AAU tra Regional Track is June 1st. The summer concerts at the Depot will be June 14th and July 12th. That's a tentative date. Um, Drums Across Kansas, July 15th. Dia Music Fest, July 25th through the 27th. Holly Frontier Western Celebration will actually be August 9th through the 11th. And the Lantern Festival on September 14th. Um, major trends and challenges in 2019. Uh, Holly Frontier will be doing another turnaround in 2018. Um, their turnaround resulted in the highest, or in high numbers for the fourth quarter transient guest tax. Um, a turnaround for the fall of 2019 has potential for another great fourth quarter for us. Um, challenge, Molly is going to be having a baby in July and that will be the height of her event season. So um, I will be doing lots of summer concerts in the, at the depot and Lantern Fest and uh, what else do I have? Drums Cross Kansas. And so uh, Molly currently does not have an assistant for those things. So uh, myself and um, some of the other departments will be helping. And that is all. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Let's move on to uh, item 12 on our agenda.
be the serious 2019A bond resolution discussion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mitch Walter with Gilmore and Bell, Vermont Council to the City. Nice to see everybody again. Uh, for the uh, city's upcoming bond uh, issuance, there are a total of 12 projects, uh, most of which were um, financed by the city's temporary notes, Series 1885, which uh, were issued a few years ago and are now coming due. And so with the notes coming due and the projects being done, and the city having recently completed the assessments for um, the remaining projects that had not previously been, been assessed, it's uh, time to move forward with the bond issue. And so the resolution that the city has before tonight uh, basically authorizes the city uh, in connection with Bond Council and the city's financial advisor, uh, Springstead, to go forward uh, with uh, preparing the necessary documents to offer the um, city's bonds for sale um, in, a, in a public offering. And so one of, those, uh, one of those actions is the authorization of the um, preparation of preliminary official statement. That's the document that goes out to the potential um, purchasers of the bonds and sets the uh, bond sale for April 1st uh, this year. And so basically uh, on April 1st, the city would be in the market, receive bids for the sale of the bonds, and uh, in theory, um, accept the low bidder for the, the purchase of the Series 2019A bonds and then come back and uh, approve the actual financing documents, the bond resolution, bond ordinance, uh, moving forward to May 1st close when the city would actually receive funds from the sale of the bonds and uh, pay off the temp notes. And so this resolution that the city has before tonight basically authorizes all of those further actions to take place down the road. Total three million oh twenty five nine forty nine. Sort of. Um, th th those were the total project costs. That does not take into account uh, prepaid special assessments for for certain okay. of these projects. Um, Springstead, uh, the city's financial advisor, along with Tammy and other folks at the city, have worked together to size the bond issue preliminarily at two million nine hundred and seventy thousand dollars. David, do we have debt retiring at the same time as we take this bond on? What's kind of our um, We do not that? have debt retiring for, I believe the next debt issuance will be retiring in 2021, 20, 2022. So this will increase the amount of outstanding debt that we have, um, but because of the as Mitch kind of alluded to, there were projects that were done and you can float them with a temporary note for four years. Mm -hmm. So we've come to the point where it's due and now we have to cash out and, and well, mm -hmm. redeem those temp notes and push to long-term bonding. And so that's what's driving some of this. Um, and then, so that will increase the amount of outstanding bonds we have by the amount of principal that is being borrowed. Um, but then in the next couple of years, 2022, we have some bond capacity will be coming off the uh, debt rules. And I would just add that the, the temporary notes in the amount of 2548000 are going to be retired. Um, at this time, the city doesn't have any other temporary notes outstanding, so that is coming off as mm -hmm. the principal of these mm -hmm. amount of bonds go on. So, yeah. Sure. And in a, in a large number of these costs are reimbursed via specials to the city annual. So an important note there, any uh, debt that is issued backed by special assessments do not account against the city statutory debt limit. Um, right. so. Do we have uh, a ballpark or a feel for how much of this is, is backed by special assessments versus what the city is uh, responsible for? I wish I would have had that with me tonight. I mean, uh, is, if, is, if you go through these projects, they're, they're residential developments, uh, a, a good chunk of them. So a large portion of that is those homeowners, property so, owners. So would it be safe to say 20% of this is maybe city and rest of it's, or is that even the only spare portion of 
We always pay a portion of every project. Some, yeah. We do. I, I would, I, I, I'd hate to put a percentage okay. to it tonight, yeah. but all of these projects, like the paving of Country Club Road, um, has a large benefit district. Um, you know, paving improvements on Haverhill, Griffith, all of these projects were ones that you all have authorized that have improvement districts. Chris so Nine, that's another big one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. We can we can certainly get you those numbers because we have the authorizing documents, so I can send you an email to follow up on that. But Scott is correct; it's a, a large majority of the projects yeah, are going to be. I guess it'd be worth specials. knowing just just for comfort level in my own sure. mind. And then uh, the increase in debt service, principal interest that's out of here that's, a, that's over and above special assessments, um, we simply account for in this upcoming budget. Right? Yep. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Anybody else have questions? Thank you for your work. It's resolution number 2878. Yeah. If none, then I would entertain a motion. I move to approve resolution number 2878, a resolution authorizing the offering for sale of general obligation improvement bonds, series 2019A of the city of El Dorado, Kansas. Seconded. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further question or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 to 0. Thank you again. Thank you. We'll be uh, back before you on April 1st with the uh, results of the bond sale. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our agenda would be interlocal agreement. Um, we met ahead of this commission meeting. We met with the school board to talk through uh, interlocal, interlocal agreements for a uh, tennis court project. Came away from there with a consensus of a location and budget. <clears throat> and we also uh, anticipated having a, 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 an agreement re revised by this meeting. Did that? Did you yes, that? We, we have a revised agreement. Um, it does provide for the site of North Main Park as per the discussion of the, cons the consensus of the group at the discussion, as well as uh, increasing the maximum not to exceed amount to 1.6 million based upon the cost estimate with the city and the school district paying <coughs> half of those costs at $800,000. Uh, that is also a not to exceed sum uh, that has been added to the, or, or amended in the, in the agreement that you had prior to, to the meeting. Um, so we've inserted the um, consensus site and we have modified the amount based upon the cost estimate understanding of course that the total project cost may come in less than that um, that is the max cap and so I guess if it if it looks like it would exceed that amount which we are not anticipating the amend the agreement would have to be amended by both parties at, at subsequent time um, and then I, I guess I would take any questions that anyone has on the specifics of the agreement Yeah, so the cost... All that stuff's got to be moved. Right. Right, yeah. right. For the hood. And it was project's cost, as far as I'm concerned, as we left that meeting. Yeah, total project cost included everything that was included in the cost estimate. So relocating the manholes, in essence, um, relocating or realigning the pedestrian pathway, and also building a fence, railroad fence, on the north end of the property. Those were all included and in remain in the project. In the million six. In, in yeah, the in the million six. In the 50 50 amount. That's right. Okay. And added possession stand and restroom. Yeah, that's what took it to 1.6 was to. Was that's to right. Oh, we had a restroom there already. Um, we did, but it was the consensus of the group to build a site specific, site -specific restroom slash concession stand. The estimated cost of that is $85,000. So it takes the 
1.5 and change up to about $1.6 million, including contingency and miscellaneous. So that's where the 1.6 came from. We felt that it needed to have its own facility. They could use it for storage too. Question number six. says that we will be giving legal title to half the land the tennis court sits on. Yeah, both parties will have a half interest in the land. It's my understanding that this was a provision. So the activity center prov agreement provided the framework for this agreement, and that was a provision that was included in that. The school district owns the land. Um, we, well, now we own the land jointly. Uh, as well as the activity center building, and so that provision was included in this one as well. But I think I hear what you're saying. It's not the whole park. It's just the footprint. No, I, right. that's correct. It just, so that's correct. Maybe, maybe somewhere along here it should say footprint instead of pro property. Does that include the parking lot, the new parking lot? Um, legal title to the real estate improvements and personal property used to operate and equip the complex, being the tennis court complex. So the parking lot adjacent to it would be included. So just the one adjacent to it, not the one. That's correct. The ones that currently exist, we will retain title of those in whole. Yeah, I think there's some gray area there. I would think we might get Ashland to weigh in, but uh, Ashland has reviewed the document and didn't have any <coughs> direct comments on that provision specifically. All of the comments that she had previously articulated as issues that she thought need to be resolved have been incorporated into the document and have been reviewed by USD 490. So she has reviewed this and has approved of it in its form. But we can, I can definitely check with her on yeah, that. Yeah, because I read that as the site for which a complex is, the property in which a complex is sited, and the property which is sited is the whole part. I want to be sure that it's the footprint of the project. If you look at number three, <coughs> located North Main Park, that is described, set forth Exhibit A, the complex shall be, um, is that what was trying to cover um, a legal description for the boundary of where the tennis courts would be and the parking facilities? Should be located at North Main Park on property that is described in Exhibit A, correct? That'd be your footprint that I'm talking about, Exhibit A? Okay. Exhibit A would be the basically the plan of the complex. I just I, I just don't want to... The plan of the complex? Oh. The faded map that you showed us? No, we'll actually get a surveyed legal description. Because right now we don't have a legal description of the actual footprint. Yeah. So as part of this, what we have to do is we have to get a surveyed legal description that matches the footprint. We don't have that right now. Okay, so, so that's, that's what will come in with attachment A. Right. Okay. All right, thanks, Kinder, for bringing that up. If there's any more questions, I'd entertain a motion. Ordinance number? G1296. I move to approve ordinance number G1296 an ordinance pertaining to and authorizing the city of El Dorado, Kansas to enter into and the mayor to sign an interlocal agreement pursuant to KSA 122901 ET section with United School District 490, Butler County, Kansas, for construction, maintenance, and use of a joint community tenants complex. Second. Okay, so moved and second. Any further question or comment? This, uh, will we ever use this concession stand? Potentially. I mean, if we host events. Well, and that, that was the site. Yeah, the right. reason for the eight courts is to be able to hold like regionals and stuff like okay. that. So, I mean, that in the end, we could do AAU tennis. That okay. we, There's all kinds of those okay. entities that Molly would be able to market to. Right, or alternatively, if somebody just has an event, like a tennis event, right. they could utilize it uh, just the same. So we wouldn't necessarily have to be a city-specific event. 
if the if somebody in the general public would like to use it and right. sell concessions, they would be able to do that. Like renting the ball fields. Right. On the north end of North Main Park, there is that field stone. What is it? Is it a parking area? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that comes out. Correct. I'm assuming the city will save the Flintstone. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good comments. Anything else? Roll call. Commissioner Lewis? Yes. Commissioner Badway? Yes. Commissioner Wilkinson? Yes. Mayor Haynes? Yes. Commissioner Guthrie? Yeah. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Do you have that for me to sign tonight, or is it? I do. You do. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Move on to item fourteen, the Willett Building. So the Willett Building, for those of you who may not know, is the building, the blue building located just right next to the Dairy Queen. Uh, we've previously talked about the future of that building, including possibly demolition. Um, at that point in time, we had, the commission had not formally made a decision to authorize the demolition. Um, in, the, in the meantime, the staff has been looking at maybe options for reuse. In fact, there was one potential option. Somebody was looking for a building for a potential farmer's market. It wasn't going to work out for him. Um, so we don't really have any desire to put any additional funds into it. It does need a lot of work if it were to be used. Um, and so we bring it to you seeking authorization to demolish the structure. The fiscal impact here suggests that it would cost between two and three thousand dollars to demolish. We'll do that in house, so we still have to pay our folks, but that's the approximate cost of that. But the the actual cost that we have right now in annual operations is about two hundred dollars of insurance. We don't we don't have utilities or anything like that on the building, so Two hundred bucks. So we're not we're not doing it to save money per se, but we're doing it because there's really no use in the building. Um, it's probably just needing to be removed. So with that, I would ask if there's any questions. But we are asking for authorization to demolish the structure. Okay. Any questions or comments? I don't have trouble with tearing it down. Uh, is there any interest from a neighboring? When we just hold the hold the vacant property at that point. I mean, we have not yet reached um, out to any adjacent property owners to see if there's any interest. It just becomes inventory of property at that point. Right. But we could definitely reach out and try to sell it. Probably worth more is vacant land than with the well. building on it. What? Probably worth more is vacant land than with that building on it. Right. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I'd entertain a motion. I move to direct the city church manager church. to proceed with the demolition of the Willett building. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero. Thank That's you. That's hard. I spent a lot of time in there. Yeah. That building has a name? The Willett building? It was a local auctioneer real estate. Gentleman Wayne Willett, okay. um, long time resident here. So there wasn't a, like a stone up that says Willett on top of no, it? Like Wayne Willett, Willett Realty and Auction. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there was a sign up there for a long time. Yeah. Yep. Good guy, neat guy. <clears throat> All right, we'll move next on our agenda would be commission reports. New business. Had a park and rec advisory board meeting last Wednesday, did not have a quorum, uh, so we just basically kind of sat around and talked about things, tossed things back and forth, but of course no decisions were made without the quorum. Opened my water bill today, very nice newsletter, Tabitha, nice, colorful, informative. Uh, Look at the information in the water bill. You've got the newsletter from the city. You've got some information in there from Parks and Rec about registration for spring sports. You've got a pamphlet in there from Public Works. Consider uh, 
talking about sewer and sewer awareness, et cetera, and so on. Really good information that we could not get out to you when we just had postcard size water bills, but now that you're getting letter size, the city's putting information in there. So one more place to learn about what's going on in the city of El Dorado. No, no. Uh, I haven't opened my water bill yet, but I will as soon as I get home. <laughs> That's all I got. I don't have anything. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. 4.30 to 7, Trinity Episcopal Church's annual Shrove Tuesday pancake feed. Mm -hmm. um, free will offering. All you can eat pancakes and sausage and fellowship and please come. It's supposed to be nicer weather and they got the parking lot cleared off, so come down and eat pancakes. Um, I don't I have my CTC meeting on tomorrow actually, right? Ten? Isn't that tomorrow? Yeah, so I haven't had any of my meetings yet. Um, yesterday, I made an adventure out into the great western snow field that we had um, just to kind of see what other towns did on their snow removal. Um, Eight o'clock yesterday, I hit Wichita, Andover, and Augusta, Main Drags, Back Streets, and Secondaries, kind of eastern Eastern Wichita, um, uh, Woodlawn, <laughs> and then some neighborhoods uh, between 13th and 21st, kind of. And I, I wish Brad was here, um, which I'm going to take a side note. What does it take to make sure that, I mean, our, our, our department heads are here, Chief's here, you know, Tammy's here all the time. I mean, Brad's not here. Kurt, I haven't seen Kurt in a year. Um, is there a reason why they don't come to these meetings? That, I mean, I, I mean, all it takes is me to tell them that. I, no, I get it. I'm just, uh, side note. Anyways, just side notes that. Um, I mean, I guess if the commission desires them won't be here. Well, I've just, I'm I'm happy I, to it's just asking them. No, I mean, it's, it's a fair question. Right. Um, we, I would say, of the five entities that I saw doing snow removal, Sedgwick County, Butler County, Andover, Augusta, El Dorado, and Wichita, Sedgwick County got, got the best grade. They, they, they did great. Um, and I would say the three cities, Andover, Augusta, and El Dorado, were all right on par. Um, maybe Andover had a little bit less snow on their main drags, but every, pretty much everybody was all kind of in the same between 8 and 9 o'clock yesterday morning. So just I figured why not put in four-wheel drive and go see what, what everybody's doing. Just to... Um, and I wanted to thank Brad for getting that tree um, off of Topeka and Central. I, I said Taylor the other day, but it was Topeka. Um, but that tree is gone, and the person that told me that um, called me and said, thank you very much. Um, they, they appreciated seeing that, that that being taken care of as quick as he took care of it. Um, I don't know how bad, how bad were the accidents yesterday, Chief? Yeah, good. That um, I mean, it seems like the citizenry stayed home, as far as I could tell. Living, on, I mean, the road on Central was pretty good, as far as the 15 cars that were on there at eight o'clock. So, um, but I just wanted to report that back to you guys that I, I did, I did jump in the truck and go drive around our neighbors to kind of compare, and it, we we were all pretty much on on the same level of, of snow removal. Okay, so. Good. To answer your prior question about the department directors, generally I don't ask them to come if there's nothing on the agenda. Okay, uh, fair. So they don't have to... I just didn't know what it was. No, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. And that's all I've got. Okay. Uh, I think the only thing I have is mayor's uh, dinner is this Thursday. Oh, I don't know how many of you guys are planning to be there, but um, I, had, I haven't really seen a, a, a SVP list yet. 
lot. <laughs> are we going to be able to house in that? We are at we are at capacity. I was going to say at the, at the PAC we're at capacity. Right, it's going to be crowded, and that's great. I'm glad. Glad. To, do you have an RSVP list? I'd be. Um, Molly has it. Okay. I can have her send it. To Could you have her send that to me tomorrow so I can be prepared for who? <laughs> <laughs> for my no, so that I can uh, uh, welcome those who are coming. Thank you. That is at the Performing Arts Center. We had a chance to, uh, to show that place off a little bit, as well as uh, uh, we're going to have a presentation from Project Wichita, which I'm glad to have that, too. I think that's all I have. I will report that I will not be here at our next commission meeting, the 18th. There so you go. Our vice oh, mayor. Oh, yes. Is, uh, did you so pay you, him off to be gone? You can make all these great decisions. Better around. mark my calendar. <laughs> so, looking forward. I'm, I'm on the gavel. Right in here. Okay. There you go. Okay, uh, that's all I have, David. So today at noon, you may have heard a tornado warning drill. That's a normal one that they do is part of the siren testing. Tomorrow there will also be another tornado warning. Uh, that is the statewide tornado drill. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. you'll hear that. They're doing that throughout the state. It may seem cold outside, but we are actually entering weather, uh, severe weather. So they're doing, as part of severe weather awareness month, I believe. Um, tomorrow they're doing a statewide tornado drill. So you, you did hear one today, you will hear one tomorrow. It probably won't be because there is a tornado. They are just trying to raise awareness for that, even though it's going to be still pretty cold out. Um, spring cleanup is coming uh, April 8th through the 12th. We are advising citizens to check the website or social media for details. I'll probably have a little bit more information at the next meeting, but just to kind of start marking that on your calendar, April 8th through the 12th will be spring cleanup. Um, we have been having some, we actually had some citizens call in to City Hall this morning saying that we'd shut their water off on Sunday. We don't shut people off on Sunday, so if you aren't getting water through the pipe, it means your pipes are frozen. Um, I don't actually know how to unfreeze your pipes, but I do know how to prevent it. Um, if you're gonna be gone or you're gonna be out or you're concerned about it, just make it so they drip a little. Um, don't necessarily turn it on, but just a little drip will help keep enough water going through the pipe that they won't freeze. Um, if you have frozen pipes, I guess they want cold water or what's that? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I'm really legitimately clueless on that. Sorry. Um, and then we are getting ready to start our drainage project on First and Second Avenue. It's supposed to be starting this week, um, weather permitting, of course, and that will be putting some um, pipes and boxes under the street there near the alley of First and Second, um, which will hope, hope which will help um, with some of the flood issues that we've been having in that neck of the woods. Um, so that will be starting up here pretty soon. We also have a number of park projects that are on hold. They're, in, they're queued up and ready to go, uh, but we've got them on hold because of the, not necessarily the cold, but because uh, we have some snow on the ground, obviously, but then probably more, more of the issue is the ground is very wet. And as a result of that, if we go in, we'll, we'll tear up and cause a lot of ruts and problems that we'll have to go back and replace anyway. So we're, we're waiting for the thaw to happen and then we need a little bit of weather to dry out, and then we'll get some of these park projects that are queued up, and we'll get we'll get moving on those. So we do have a lot of things that are going to be happening as soon as we get some cooperation from Mother Nature. So with that, I'll take any questions um, that you may have. Any other questions? None. Thank you. We'll move to adjournment. If that's enough for further. We have a motion to adjourn. We we'll move. We adjourn. Second. We move and second it. Any further question? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. <laughs>